Good morning. Today we are continuing our review of division. Yesterday we reviewed dividing a two-digit number by a one-digit number, and today we're going to work on dividing a two-digit number by a one-digit number and dividing a three-digit number by a one-digit number. The process remains the same, and the vocabulary remains the same. Remember, this week your biggest goal is to remember that. The number that is telling you how many parts you're dividing that dividend into is called the divisor. And your answer is called the quotient. And if the dividend cannot be divided exactly evenly by the divisor, then your quotient is also going to have a remainder and then you write that as R, and then whatever's left over. So that's the biggest thing I want to remember, and it's going to be something that you're going to use on your test on Friday. When we start reviewing two- and three-digit numbers that are divided by a one-digit number, remember it's just one step at a time. Don't get overwhelmed when you see that the dividend is a big number, like a three-digit number or even a four-digit number. We just need to break them off or take it apart one step at a time. And I'm going to explain how to do that. We'll take number one, for example. Okay, and we have 132 divided by two. And you're going to start this way. You're going to look at your first number, and you're going to say, can two go into one? Well, it can't because two is bigger than one. So then we have to go to the next number, and we say, well, can two go into 13? And yes, it can. We know that 2 times 6 is 12. And so we're going to put down our 12 and we're going to subtract. Okay, 3 minus 2 is 1. And 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have a remainder of 1. And from the video and discussion in class today, you know that you can make a check by making sure that this number here, the remainder or what's left, is not bigger than your divisor. Once you're there, you know that it's not bigger, you're going to bring down your next number, which is 2. And now you're going to say 2 can go into 12 how many times? Well, we know that 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 minus 12 is 0. And so we don't have a remainder. And so for number 1, our answer is 66. Number 2, we have 2 into 118, or we have 118 divided by 2. Okay, can how many times can 2 go into our first number, which is 1? Well, it cannot. So then we look to the next one. Well, how many times can 2 go into 11? Well, we know that 2 can go into 11 5 times because we know that 2 times 5 is 10. We're going to do our subtraction, and 1 minus 0 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. And we can check to make sure that it's not too high, meaning this 1 is smaller than our divisor, which it is. And now we can go back and bring down our next number, which is 8. And we know that 2 can go into 18 9 times, because 2 times 9 is equal to 18. And 18 minus 18 is 0, so you have no remainders. Your answer for number 2 is 59. Okay, in number 3, we have the number 70 divided by 2. And we know that 2 can go into 7. Okay, and 2 times 3, which is equal to 6, and we're going to do subtraction. 7 minus 6 is 1, and we check to make sure that that 1 is less than the divisor, which is 2, and it is. Okay, then we're going to bring down our next number here, which is a 0, and 2 can go into 10, Five times because 2 times 5 is 10 and 10 minus 10 is 0 and we have no remainders so number 3 the answer is 35 number 4 we have 258 divided by 3 in this number 
We know that 2 cannot be divided by 3 because it is smaller. So we have no, that won't work. So we move to our next number, which makes it 25. 3 can go into 25 8 times because we know 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Now we're going to complete our subtraction. 5 minus 4 is equal to 1 and 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. Do your check and make sure your what's left, your 1, is not bigger than the divisor of 3, which it's not, so you're good. Bring down your 8. 3 times what number is going to get us 18 or close? Well, we know that 6 times 3 is equal to 18, and 18 minus 18 is 0. So we have an answer of 86 with no remainders. We're going to move on to number 5, and we have the number 160 divided by 4. We know that 4 cannot go into 1, because 1 is smaller than 4. So we go to the next number, which makes it 16. We know that 4 times 4 is equal to 16. 6 minus 6 is 0, and 1 minus 1 is 0, so 16 minus 16 is 0. Bring down your 0. We know 4 can go into 0, 0 times. So our answer is 40. We're going to complete one more problem together. We have 344 divided by 4. And we know that 4 cannot go into 3 because it's bigger. But 4 can go into 34. And 4 times 8 is equal to 32. And we're going to complete our subtraction. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2, and 3 minus 3 is equal to 0. We check to make sure our remainder, what we have left, the 2, is less than the divisor, which is 4. And it is. 2 is less than 4. So we know we can move on. We bring down our 4. And we know that 4 times 6 is equal to 24. We can do our subtraction. 24 minus 24 is 0. And we have no remainder. And so our answer to number 6 is 86. I would like you to complete the last three problems, 7, 8, and 9, on your own, and then submit them through Teams, please.